We're in this defunct quarry just beneath Sentinel Peak, which many people know as A Mountain. The quarry was established in the 1880s to extract lava rock to build the foundations for a lot of the buildings in the downtown area. It's such an interesting place in that it's been repurposed and yet it has this intrinsic colonial history of extraction. My work often deals with the relationship between humans and our interdependence with the rest of the world and imagines different scenarios in which those interdependent relationships might take shape in the present and the future. I received a grant in 2020 to create an experimental film that takes place in Glen Canyon and imagines this post-human future after Lake Powell, which is imminently evaporating in the present. And it imagines this post-human future in which all of the different species that were drowned in the damming of Glen Canyon re-emerge in these calcified ghost-like forms. My work like a space of offering time and sensation to cultivate a cushion for grief. But I think what happens when we accept grief is that we can then imagine that intensity and transmute it into anger, revolutionary action, or these states of coming together in commune with one another. We are in Gates Pass, which is adjacent to Saguaro National Park. I think a lot of times visitors might not be aware that they are actually in habitat and that there are a lot of different evolutionary processes happening around them, including but not limited to extinction, and that there's a lot of really amazing, flourishing, mutualistic relationships going on. I trained as a ballet dancer since I was about five, and I'm really comfortable sort of embodying these magical, more than human characters, like a lot of classical ballet. And I work in conservation, I'm an environmental organizer, and I thought art and science and activism, those things coming together are really powerful. And my projects focus on biodiversity, highlighting different species that are threatened or endangered. So exploring how is the biodiversity of this place affected by light, noise, pollution, human presence, development, all of those things impact wildlife's ability to survive and to thrive. I'm hoping that when people watch the things that I do when I'm performing, then maybe it leads them to think about what extinctions are happening in their backyard. I think the discourse around climate change for a long time was about our individual responsibility and having these other deeply systemic issues, namely capitalism and colonialism, that are perpetuating this unraveling. We're starting to talk a little bit more about that, but I think we're also at a moment of imagining our interdependence in a much deeper way as we see all of this unraveling take place. But at its core, the problem has been placing that onus on us as individuals when we are actually the recipients of these systemic problems. Somewhat frequently, you're seeing all these emerging studies that we've lost 70 to 80 percent of wild animals since the early 70s. This desert is what it is because of its exact temperature and precipitation. So whenever we have these huge fires that sweep through this landscape and buffalo grass takes root, the saguaro aren't coming back. And so it's a cascade of events that lead to either little local extinctions or across the whole Sonoran Desert or whatever ecosystem we're talking about. As climate change perpetuates its course, we're going to inevitably become more aware of our relationship to the natural world and to other species. How does a human move in a landscape that feels organic and like a little bit more primal? We get really stuck in our experiences outside. So like so-and-so has hiked the Arizona Trail the fastest. I'm like, what about the slowest? 
why do we have to have everything in the outdoors be a competition? It just sort of drives that narrative that American culture is based on of dog eat dog, and that's not even true. The natural world thrives on mutualism and symbiosis just as much as it does competition, and so I'm very interested in the desert tortoise. They've been here for over 50 million years. What wisdom can we take away as humans when we are also thinking about how are we going to adapt and survive? I think it's devastating for our own species to think that we're the smartest ones out here. And it also is kind of a bummer to think about how a tortoise has such resiliency and adaptation to make it this far. And right now it's listed federally as threatened because of human development. Like, what does that say about us? There are all of these structural value systems that are given to the way that climate change is conveyed to us through the news. And they're these are valuative numerical structures. And what art can do is represent all of that energetic experience that exists outside of that information, offering us a space to think about what we're actually feeling through this. Rather than projecting anxiety into the future, what I think engaging with art and creative expression can do is situate you in this ever-evolving present as a way to think in a deeper and more expansive way about what the possibilities for futures look like outside of capitalism perpetuating climate change. It's scary, because when you love something, that's what grief is. In our society, we don't even slow down enough to check in and see how we're feeling about things as heavy as the Anthropocene and climate change. And I think that the creative process is an act of resistance because some forces want to wear you down. Some forces are expecting you to get exhausted. 